All right. Well, hey, welcome back to Keep It Simple Podcast. This is a podcast that Tom LeCompte and me, Gavin Durson, have been doing for some time on Simple Church and related issues to folks living out their faith outside the traditional church box, so to speak. And it's been a long delay, Tom. It's good to see you again. It's been a long time. We've had a we've had a rough, I guess it's been almost two years uh, since we've sat before these microphones and We've had uh, family issues, both of us, and we've had um, COVID and, you know, pretty much a shutdown. And then it's just the last few months, Gavin and I have been talking among ourselves saying, hey, we need to get the band back together. And uh, we've been talking about it and talking about it. And finally, we're uh, sitting down in front of the microphone. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. And, and we're really excited. Uh, a couple, we, we've got some ideas of some things we want to do differently, sort of as we hit the reset button on this podcast. We appreciate those of you that are listening. I'm not, we're never really sure how many are out there, but it, over the years, it's been awesome to meet a few of you who have benefited from some of the conversations Tom and I ha- have had. One of the changes that we're making is that we're actually on video right now, too. So we thought we would give the whole YouTube thing a try. Maybe that might be a different venue for folks who have an interest in uh, maybe they're more on YouTube more than they are on podcasts. But uh, so we're going to try to give it a shot with both of these. We'll see how it goes. Um, we, may lose, we may lose some listeners if, we, if they see our face. We're definitely going to lose some listeners, especially when they see what I've got going on in the background of my video over here. For those going to have to explain wondering. that, otherwise we're going to lose even yeah, more. Yeah, so listeners. yeah, so not to derail this conversation too much, but yeah, I have been doing uh, some video work with my brother in his business called Creative Caddy, and uh, this is part of a set that uh, we have we've been doing uh, that involves uh, an alien conspiracy. Uh, uh, show so that's, i'll leave it at that and uh if you happen to be listening to this channel and you want to learn more of it maybe uh you could go on to the instagram account of kentucky basketball player dante allen and you'll probably see what that's about but that that's that whole project sort of unfolding and it's really goofy and bizarre but um that's what that's all about and it kind of makes for an interesting simple church podcast when you've got uh alien conspiracy headlines on the back of you so that's what this podcast is about and uh for anyone who might just be joining us uh again i'm gavin durson i I live in lexington kentucky tom is in louisville and we've both been doing house church simple church kinds of things for man it's been a for me uh over 10 years now and tom it's probably 18 years yeah 18 for you and you know we started this podcast several years ago we wanted to just really it was selfish just there's an excuse for me and Lexington, Tom and Louisville, just to have a reason to get together and have some conversations that we felt like were relevant to what we were experiencing. And it's been, it's been really good. And I really missed connecting with Tom. And, and uh, so we're going to have these talks and if you get something out of them, we'd love to hear about it. And if you have something that you would like to us to discuss a question or things uh, along the way, please let us know. It is helpful and encouraging to know who's out there. Um, we do have a, a website, keep it simple podcast.com. And uh, you can find us on iTunes on stitcher. Um, do we have the podcast up on, I think do we, we're not on Spotify. We got to figure we're that not out. On Spotify yet. We're, we're going to, once we record this um, and we figure out, the editing and everything yeah we're we're not only going to put it on spotify but also youtube i guess yeah 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 so um enough about me and and that whole deal let's just jump right into some of the topic today we want to sort of give just a recap of kind of where we've been what's been going on in our 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 lives our journey with house church simple church kinds of things and then we want to throw out some topics We, we i've got a list of things here i'm excited to talk about it's sort of been you know, I, I kind of think we both were kind of like, man, going through everything. And it's like, I don't really know. I don't know. You, you know, it, it, it you, you got to have it kind of in your belly to get on here and hash through things. And I, I, I've been in survival mode. It feels a little bit like so thinking much beyond getting through the day has been a challenge. And and I know that has been the case for a lot of people. But I, I'm definitely I'm definitely loaded for bear here. I, I got a lot of things that have been stirring in my heart. And I, and again, I'm just working through them. And part of what this podcast has been has been you and I think, Tom, just hashing things out, working through them together. And if somebody else joins in and listens, that's great. But won't we get updated on kind of where we've been these last couple of years, what's been happening and, and kind of where we, where you are in life and with your house church, why don't you get us started off, Tom? Well, like I said, um, 
I've been real busy the past two years um, with some family issues going on. Uh, recently moved into this house and it's a, it's a work in progress. It's not quite finished. So I've been devoting a lot of time to that. Um, um, of course we had COVID and we couldn't, um, couldn't operate normally. We're, we're starting to get back together with that. Uh, our, our church has been meeting regularly. Uh, oh, I don't know. Probably, probably for a year now, you know, we used to do zoom and that was interesting. And, um, um, but now we're back to meeting, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. most of us have been vaccinated. So we lost the masks and, um, so, uh, and if, you know, someone comes down with it, they, they stay home and stay home for two weeks. And so and you're um, all kind of going by that thing. I've heard people where they do, where it's like, if you're sick, you stay home. And if you're not sick, you just go about life. I've heard it's of kind people of complicated. doing that. Yeah, I understand. It's kind of complicated <laughs> that way, but, uh, that's what we do. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're just being smart. Um, but yeah, and it's been good. Um, I've been working a lot lately, so I only managed to be there about half the time. And, um, it's been nice having it in our house once or twice. Um, that's been really cool. I've, um, as you may know, I've, I moved into a barn and I've renovated it and fixed it up to live in. So um, it's it's got lots of space. So if you're ever in the area and we have church at our house, welcome to come in and see our barn. So you've been here, right, Gavin? Yes, I have. I have been yeah. there. Yes, we I have. Coffee on the porch. I remember. So, um, but yeah, we're um, the, the, the one thing I'll say about these last two years with COVID is we have maintained um, the church that we have been. I mean, we haven't really grown, but we haven't um, shrunk it as well. So we haven't shrunk either. So that's good. And we've been going through some books. Um, going, we're currently going through the book of uh, Corinthians, you know, one chapter at a time or half a chapter at a time or mm -hmm. one verse at a time. You know, it depends on who's leading and who's discussing and how many questions there are. So uh, we've been doing that and um, it's been good. And, and um, the, the cool thing is that, that Bonnie and I are still working with international students at the university of Louisville. Uh, we are, um, we weren't, we, we were not able to do much with them last this past year. Um, we had one or two meetings at the beginning of the semester and then uh, the, the uh, COVID rate went up and then we, we went back to Zoom and we've had a few uh, events, but uh, this year we're kind of almost back to normal. You know, we're wearing some masks and we're doing a few things differently, but we're almost back to where we were two years ago. And that being said, you know, we're, we're trying to lead Bible studies and uh, uh, with, with international students, um, most of whom come to us and, and you know, they're, they don't, they, they don't know what Christianity means. Yeah. So that's been, it's been kind of fun introducing them to, uh, to Jesus. But um, our, our goal is, is to use, you know, uh, the, the techniques that we we're using in our church to, to teach them as well, because when they go back home, there may not be an existing church for them and they may have to do what we're doing, you know, meet in the living room, meet in the, the coffee shop. Um, and that's, you know, that, that shouldn't be a strange thing for them because they, they'll already know how to do it. Yeah, no, that's good. And, uh, Tom, I guess maybe for anybody that might be new to this, tell us a little, tell, explain to you kind of what you do for your job, like during the days you're not doing massively awesome podcasts and YouTube videos. What is it that you do? Well, I, I'm, I'm a stunt man um, for Hollywood, and um, <laughs> that's that's a lie. I am a helicopter pilot for uh, uh, EMS, uh, which sometimes involves stunts, but uh, I do my own stunts and um, unintentional stunts unintentionally yeah so um you know people often confuse um gavin with quentin tarantino and they confuse me with george clooney so um i apologize for that i apologize my apologies to george clooney and quentin tarantino yeah Just, we're that's... not them <laughs> <laughs> well man that's awesome tom and then it's good just to get an update and 
man, I tell you, it's been a wild couple of years. I, you know, I know you and I've, you, you and I have been in conversation about things. So I, I feel like uh, sometimes a broken record, but, you know, I, assuming that no one is kind of knows what's going on or has been going on with our family, I can try to give the, the brief version and, and uh, I could certainly direct people to more fuller versions of what's happening in our lives and what's kind of been happening. Um, there's, there's been several articles and podcasts and things that my wife's even done that, that probably would give you a better in-depth if, if anything connects with someone, but you know, for us, um, and I don't remember if we ever talked about any of this during our last podcast or not, it's been so long ago, but basically a couple, well, two and a half, three years ago, we found out we were going to be having another baby and, and, um, found out very soon thereafter that our child was going to have some really special needs. We thought at first she might have down syndrome, uh, which is trisomy 21. And then we later learned that we, she was diagnosed with trisomy 18, which at the time was very devastating. It was very difficult. Um, that pretty much as far as the statistics showed carried with it, uh, you know, a very short lifespan, if a lifespan at all. Um, most children with trisomy 18 are not born. Sadly, they're aborted. Um, and those that are delivered usually only live a couple of weeks. And of those that make it past a couple of weeks, only something like uh, 10% of that group that's left over after a couple of weeks make it to their first birthday. Um, and so it was just a very, and we, 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 we knew that was a slight possibility. But when we heard the news about that, it was just very devastating. Probably one of the darkest periods I've ever been through in my life. Uh, to just being honest, uh, we had several conversations with the hospital about abortion that was being offered to us. And that was very um, troubling and upsetting. Um, had to have some one-on-one -on -one conversations with some doctors there about that. And uh, that really helped, I think, in some ways for us to get on the same page and you do kind of, even though you don't like it, you do learn that these doctors are under legal liability to, to explain options of which is abortion. Um, but, you know, for, you could almost feel the tension in those environments. Some of you probably experienced it where it's like, man, there's just, everybody's afraid of being sued about something. It's kind of the world today. But so, yeah, we went through that. My daughter uh, was born and praise God, she lived, she breathed. That's a big deal. Um, we spent the most of the first year of her life in the, um, in the hospital at university of Kentucky had great, awesome experience there. Um, man, it was amazing. Uh, um, and we lived in that hospital there with her for most of her first year of life. Um, we got out of the hospital the day that the quarantine started, uh, for COVID. In fact, the first patient in Kentucky was there in the hospital with us when, when that all happened. And then that same week we got out and then the lockdown started. And, and um, um, during that time, my daughter uh, made it to her first birthday um, and she made it to her second birthday. And so as I talk to you right now, she's downstairs. We do have in-home nursing. Uh, lots, lots, lots going on with that. We've been in and out of the hospitals multiple times since then, but um, she's at home right now. She's doing well. She has a cold, but uh, hopefully she will not be, have to be admitted to the hospital for her cold, which crazy enough, crazily enough is usually what is the times we've had to go back. It's usually related to just a, a normal virus that you and I can handle pretty well. She has a pretty tough time with it. Um, so she's been amazing. And, you know, there's several things I could say, uh, things in many ways, and I know this whole last few years has ch shaped a lot of us. It's changed a lot of us. It's caused us to rethink things. And I would say that for me, it's been a doubly so um, with her. A um, lot of things that I'm going to get into, I think, as we go forward on this podcast, I, I think are just as a result of what God's done in my life and my family's life, as a result of our daughter, Wiley, Margaret Wiley Durson. We call her Wiley. And, uh, and, it's been one of the more challenging seasons of my, the most challenging season of my life without a doubt. Um, and it's also been one of the richest and one of the greatest. So um, it's definitely impacted my view of God, my understanding of who God is, and even my understanding of simple church and what we're encouraging and trying to be about as it relates to promoting um, church outside of the box, so to speak. So 
really looking forward to unpacking all that and getting into more and more of it as we get going. But uh, our, our church has been an amazing family through it. We've seen the first day that we found out about Wiley's diagnosis, we had a new family join that immediately the next week said, we'll host. And they were a part of our community through all of that. Up until recently, they moved to, to Florida. So we had a mother and father and then their daughter and her husband and children. They were all a part of our community and they left. And we've had several new people join our community. We've sent some people out. We just had another family that moved to New Orleans and they're hoping to as they get settled in there to be continuing simple church there. So that'll be something that uh, we'll be trying to encourage and pray for along the way. Maybe we'll have those folks jump on here and follow their process of that on this podcast. Cause it is always a challenge to move into a new area or it's home for them, but to see how a church can start, it, you know, as we've talked about Tom, it's, there's no formula for it, but um, a lot of good things, a lot of richness, a lot of joy through it all. And man, just, really, really grateful to see how God has used not just our simple church, but the body of Christ. You know, it's been humbling to be on the receiving end of so much grace and care and love and patience and support um, these last few years. But honestly, I don't know, we could have made it without it. So it's just been awesome. And God's been really, really good to us. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been interesting to watch what's, what's been happening with you for the past two years. And how your faith has remained strong, you, you and Carla, and um, just an amazing time. Yeah, I, I don't wish that on anybody, but um, God is faithful to carry you all through that. So it's been yeah, it's been uh, interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, and I guess just uh, kind of get into, I guess, go a little bit deeper than the nuts and bolts of kind of just the X's and O's of kind of what's been happening. Um, you know, one story, I tried to write this a couple times, like on our podcast, or on the, the uh, simplechurchalliance.com website, and I've just stopped myself. And I found that for whatever reason, it's not something that I, I feel more like it's something that as the Lord gives me opportunity to talk about, I, I will talk about it, not, not so much write about it. But, um, you know, one, one thing that has been pretty foundational in God started doing this in me. I think we probably did talk about some of this before all this happened, but I, there was a time before my wife, we found out she was pregnant that I had really been challenged to just look more deeply into how much just the under, deeper understanding of the love of God and prayed even a prayer um, that, you know, to ask the father say, you know, we you know, reveal to me how much you love me. Can you show me how much you love me? And that was, I think we had talked about maybe some of the things that Wayne Jacobson had talked about um, uh, several years ago, but um, just sort of the idea that most of us are walking around, not really aware of how much we're loved by God. And as a result, we tend to do things in without even realizing it. And some, do, you know, at varying degrees, there's always that other guy who's very legalistic and trying to earn God's love. But even in my own heart, realizing like, man, how much do I really think God likes me and loves me and approves of me, irregardless of what I do for him. You know, I'd started praying that prayer and then found out my wife was pregnant. And, and then we went through all that. And I remember my, my daughter had had several moments where we weren't sure if she was going to live through the night. She did have open heart surgery at two months old. And that's a whole story in itself, just a miracle. I mean, amazing that, you know, this guy could go in there on a little heart the size of that and find three holes and patch them up. And, hmm. but, um, there was one night I was in the hospital with my daughter and I was just, you know, you, you kind of find yourself just kind of, ex, you know, just talking to her, ex, you know, you're not really thinking about what you're saying. You're just kind of verbalizing things that are in your heart. And I was saying, I, I heard myself saying things like, you know, Wiley, like, I love you. Um, I just, you know, I, I don't care if you can talk or walk. M most children with trisomy 18 aren't verbal or, or able to walk. Um, so, you know, I was just saying, you know, if you can't walk or talk or, if you can't, you know, do anything, if I have to take care of you your whole life, if I have to, you know, you know, I'm down for it. I, I, I love you. I care about you. Your mother and I, you know, we love you so much. You're just articulating these things to her there. And you've got a, obviously a range of emotions that are going on. And of course, I'd been living in a hospital, not really doing much to earn God's love, if, if that were as if that were possible. 
um, but probably kind of a little bit affected by that. But I'm saying these things, and I, and the words came out of my mouth. I said, you know, Wiley, if if there's just one thing that I long for you to know and to be able, if if you could help, if we could know, if we could just know, as your parents, that you know how much you're loved by us, that, that would be it. That's all, you know, can, you know, can you smile? Can you, if there's any way of you, you know, could you just come, let us know that, you know, that, you know, you are loved. And it was like, I, I said something to that effect, but when those words came out of my mouth, man, it was one of those, you know, we've talked to, and probably will talk in the future about the whole idea of God talking to us and how that works. And, and how that seems to be important in our Christian faith and how it can be sometimes a little weird as well. But if there was ever those moments where you, you feel as certain as you can be that God was speaking, when, those, when I heard those words out of my mouth, it, it was as if God was speaking them to me personally. And I, I've said, man, if I looked over and saw Jesus standing there in the room at that moment, I wouldn't have been surprised because it was one of those God moments that is defining and reshaping my life as I unpack it all, but it was as if, you know, I, I was basically, God was saying to me, man, Gavin, that's exactly what I've been trying to get you to understand your whole life. Like it, it you know, if you don't do a bunch of stuff for me, it, I just want you to know how much I long for you to know and understand how much I love you. And I still don't know that I do, but Wiley has been a, uh, just an amazing gift in the answer to that prayer, because I'm, I'm continually reminded in her of how much God loves me, irregardless of how much problems I cause him, how much I don't do for him, or how much I do do for him. My limited human love for her is, you know, is like any love a parent has um, for a child. It's probably magnified in my mind because of she doesn't do stuff for us, really, like in the sense of like our other kids do. She does require constant care around the clock but my love is still full on and that's a human love and to think about how much god loves you and me tom or anyone listening to this irregardless of what we do and and then to see that how she has changed and impacting so many people's lives just being who she is not trying just being who god made her to be and just living her life i mean there's countless of stories that have people that have like heard of our story of contemplating abortion. We knew one story that, you know, a woman chose life because of something that my wife had written or, or this Hmm. or that. And then just the other, the prayers, like the people's lives that she's impacted. I mean, there's just so many stories and it's been really just an amazing, amazing journey that we're on and, and difficult, but wouldn't trade it for the world. And so yeah, that that that's kind of I guess at a deeper level of, of where I'm at, where God's been taking me, and I'm I'm still kind of figuring out, man, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for me helping people start simple churches or encouraging that, or what does that mean for church in general? Like, how does that impact maybe thinking through what God's been showing me? You know, that's kind of a lot of what I'm working through these days, and probably will come out in this podcast. Well, let me ask you one question there uh, concerning that: How has your church helped you through that helped you through this whole process how how has your community um supported you and encouraged you well i think you know you know we talk about this about you know one of the things we've talked a lot about is that man like we should be doing you know if we're having a house church it's not really that that any one person is like the pastor, the priest, it's, we really tried to take this idea of the priesthood of all believers seriously. And we really try to encourage people to, you know, think through like that. We're all, you know, bringing something to the table. We're not, we're depending on Christ as the pastor. We're trying to figure what, what does that mean exactly? You know, and I I think as much as we say those things at the end of the day, like, man, like, you know, a lot of times we're meeting in my house and a lot of times like, man, I'm the one doing the house church podcast. So I probably assume like, man, you know, even though I'm, I'm trying not to, I probably take on more than I should in my, at times. And like my responsibility or dependence for this thing happening. And I think that to answer your question, a lot of grace, like, man, there's just been, you know, I think, man, there's a lot of, you know, 
Sunday's like, I'm, I'm coming and I'm not, I don't got anything. I'm, I, you know, I am needing, I'm needing to be received, to receive like, man, I'm kind of running on empty. I'm, I'm not even pretend, able to pretend that I've got my act together or that I've got some great word from God and I'm going to be the, you know, you know, I just, you know, and, and I think there's just been because of the relationship is all, you know, the relational nature of how she, like there's been a real grace for that, that I don't, I've never once felt that, you know, from folks like there's just permission to, man, we're going to support you. Like it's not dependent on you. And so it's kind of worked the way you would hope. Like I've kind of can, you know, I've been able to be receive more than like, feeling that pressure to come and be the one giving, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. I think I have given, but that's the way it always works, right? Like you just, God's not interested in us trying to take on more than he's asked us. And so I think I've had permission to do that. And that's been really, really a gift. And I would say this, not just the simple, you know, one of the things we've talked a lot about is that, man, when you're in house church, I think kingdom becomes bigger and more important because you re- you're always aware, like, man, the church is bigger than just these folks in my living room. Some of you all have had house churches. It consists of your family and your family alone. <laughs> and, and, you know, when you're going through things, he's like, man, like I'm a part of the kingdom. I identify with the kingdom of God and God's kingdoms at work all around me in the kingdoms. You know, it, it may be people from this church or that church, but just seeing that God's church, not even my church or, you know, help. It's like, the God's people, his church in the city has encouraged in so many ways, people that don't even are connected to us officially or whatever. And anyway, you know, they just, God's people hear about a need and show up, you know, yeah. that's been amazing. I mean, we had a couple that used to be a part of simple church, but moved to Nashville. They came up to let, they came on their anniversary. They got a hotel and came to Lexington because they wanted to come and pray for our daughter, you know, yeah. They felt like that was what they needed to do. And so that was their anniversary, man, you know, and, you know, you're just blown away by that kind of stuff. And it was a powerful time we had with them. And, you know, um, so you're just like, wow, you know, that's cool. That's, that's, that's good. That, and that's the way a community is supposed to be. Yeah. You're, you're not, you're not uh, burdened with everything. And on top of that, uh, uh, yeah. I'm a healthy girl and, um, you know, the community's supposed to be there for us. We're supposed to be there. We're supposed to support one another, encourage one another. And I think yeah. I've seen a, a good example of that with your church and uh, certainly my church. Um, we're, we're trying to live that out as well. And um, yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, I, you know, and um, I didn't mean to take all the, all the updating time, but uh, I definitely, definitely been it's been awesome just having this you know seeing god at work and you know i've got a list here of things you know man i'm really excited to get into as we get get this thing going i don't know i know you had some topics tom that you were interested in in kind of us getting into and yeah what can folks what can folks expect as we keep this thing rolling well i before before we give them our list i'd like to solicit a list from our listeners and 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 uh ask them what what do you want to what do you want to hear about? What do you want to hear concerning uh, a simple way of doing church, um, practical matters, uh, theological matters, whatever, whatever you want to talk about? Um, you know, we're probably going to steer away from politics, things like that. But, you know, if it has to do with the church, let's uh, let's talk about it. But um, we have a couple of things in mind. I think uh, look forward to um, one of the one of the most popular podcasts out there right now is the rise and fall of Mars Hill. And Gavin and I have both, you know, attentively listened to every episode so far. I think it, it's not finished yet, but um, so far we've listened and uh, we'd like to discuss that maybe. And um, um, we don't want to spoil it for you, but uh, we want to talk about that and how that relates to, you know, church in general and, and simple church um, directly. Um other things, uh, um, I would like to talk about uh, the the mass exodus of uh, young people from from church as we know it, which um, it, it doesn't look like a, a a positive trend. It looks like uh, we're losing a lot of people 
Uh, they're walking away from their faith. And I'd like to talk about that at some point in the future. And uh, what else you got, Gavin? Yeah, you know, I mean, I just, I've kind of been keeping a little list here of things I would like to, to get into. Um, you know, you mentioned Mars Hill. I, I, I mean, I'd like to talk about The Chosen. I, I think we might have mentioned, I, I don't know if we've talked about that, but man, I'd love to talk about that. It's been an interesting show. Spoiler alert, I, I think it's been 100% awesome, minus the last episode of the second season. I think they just totally... Well, see, now I, I've only seen season one. I, I, I cringed I, at it, but we'll get into that. Um, denominationalism, um, you know, I think that's something that I've been working through, denomination, the role of denominations uh, going forward, and what is a vision of the church in the future? How do denominations fit into that? Do they fit into that? I, I wrote down comedy because I think that um, I think that what is, you know, that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with simple church, although it could, because I think there's a role for laughter. It's something I've always thinking about. I, um, I think sometimes, um, you know, what's the point? What's the purpose of comedy and laughter in the kingdom? Um, what would I do different? You know, it's 11, coming up on 11 years in here for me on this. Like if I had to do it over again and we're starting fresh and new, what would I do different? That's a question I've been thinking a lot about because I feel like in some ways I am hitting a reset button on, on, in many, many things in life. But, um, certainly as I think about going forward with simple church, what it is I'm doing, what would I do different? The so, great, so are you saying, um, Gavin, that you're going to have an open mic night at your house one of these nights? It's possible. It's possible. Uh, <laughs> what would I, what would I, uh, yeah, the idea of freedom, you know, I, I think that's something I, I think is really interesting and what is, that what does it mean to be freedom uh, to exp to be free in Christ and free the church's role in Christian freedom um, and how does house church promote or hinder that how has the church promoted or hindered the idea of Christian freedom um, you know man there's rethinking discipleship um, a practical matter of just the issue of liability that I get that question. Sometimes it's come up again more recently in a couple of conversations I've had, um, you know, what about power? Wh wh where's the role of power in the kingdom and in the church? Like, it seems like we know a lot about abuse of power, but you know, is there power? What is the appropriate understanding of power within the kingdom and in the church? Um, you know, you'd mentioned it kind of hit it on deconstruction, what, you know, is that there's a lot of this deconstruction thing going on. What does that look like? I'm sure a lot of people may think we're deconstructing or I am, and maybe I am to some degree. And is that all bad? And what is deconstruction? It seems to be defined a lot differently. Um, I wrote this down. I, I'm thinking that it's more simple than even I thought. And I, I constantly keep coming back to that. You know, I, um, that's been a big part of this journey for me. And we call things simple church, the simple church podcast um yeah is it more simple than even we thought you know that's that's what i wrote um and why it's, is it so hard to keep things simple it's yep. simple but it's still messy yeah yeah, yeah. why is and that maybe that's why maybe that's why it's uh hard to keep things simple i'm also wondering if it's hard to keep things simple because maybe we really don't believe that god loves us as much as he does you know we we introduce our ideas of earning and striving and straining and performing you know even in house church and so that ends up complicating things perhaps um you know i i'd like to uh yeah I, i've got other things here revisiting elders the bible is it a manual for how church works um um why, why, why do we want to talk about that that old book hmm. yeah um <laughs> uh, yeah wow yeah and then, um, yeah, I, I also think there's something about this idea of uh, uh, meta, Facebook changing its name, this whole like idea of where the culture and society is moving. Um, what is, what might be the role of church, specifically those of us outside the box? Like how might we be positioned or in place to help um, 
stand up against this idea of that the a virtual life is a real life and and so what is the role of technology even in like a house church how can that help these sorts of things and when does it become too much these are sort of the things i these are a few of the things i got more but i'm going to shut up there if any of those things interest you let us know maybe you've got some other things but i'd like to get into some of this in in the in the coming episodes and we're always happy to revisit uh Old topics as well. I mean, I think a lot of people when they're starting this journey, they come to it. How do I start a house church? How do, you know, what does it mean? You know, how do, how do I lead a house church or, you know, all the practical matters that sometimes seem to be up there at the front, you know, we have addressed those and we're happy to revisit them and we will, but you can also make sure we've got a whole catalog of podcasts. You can jump in at any time and check out some of the previous ones as well. If those are some of the things you're interested in. Yeah. What about, man, that sounds like a good return podcast. We ready to call it a day on this first one, Tom? Yeah, let's uh, let's wrap this up because we've, we've talked and talked and talked and uh, we'll give them something to think about and we'll return next week. I think we'll, um, we'll start talking about Mars Hill first. And uh, if you have comments to, um, to add to that, let's, uh, you, can, you can get us on Facebook uh, at Keep It Simple podcast and you can uh, leave comments at keep it simple podcast.com and um i think yeah, that'd be great on twitter and, right yeah uh well we're simple church alliance or k k at ky simple church uh is on twitter and uh you can find me there gavin durson i've got that's one thing i probably need to have to talk about i feel like i got too many different things going on i'm trying to simplify everything but uh yeah gavin durson's fine and uh you haven't listened to mars hill get over there and check out the first couple of episodes it's pretty riveting give us some good uh background on some of the things we're going to talk about and if, if you don't that's fine next podcast we'll introduce it to you and maybe you'll decide then if it's something you want to listen to but till then man thank you all for joining us hopefully we haven't broken any uh computer monitors by you all having the drudgery of seeing our faces on here and uh we'll give it a go and thank you all we'll see you next time see you next time I